again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. This is Monday Night Baseball on ABC, the Mets against the Phillies. But in truth, the two biggest stories in baseball, Pete Rose and his 43-game consecutive hitting streak and, of course, the continuing saga of Billy Martin, the manager of the Yankees, who have had so much turmoil and turbulence this year. When one thinks about Pete Rose, one thinks about a gritty little guy with the skills that aren't quite what the superstars are supposed to be, but he's the right guy to break DiMaggio's record if he can. When one thinks about Billy Martin, one thinks about a day a week ago in the second floor mezzanine of a Kansas City hotel when the troubled manager, as you look at the split screen before you, rose to your left and Billy there to your right, the troubled manager left the Yankees. I don't want to hurt this team's chances for the pennant, but there's some new publicity the team has, has a shot at the pennant, and I hope they win it. I owe it to my health and my mental well-being to resign. I would like to thank the Yankee management. The press, the news media, my coaches, my players, and most of all, Five days later, though, there was this scene at Yankee Stadium in New York. The Yankees would like to announce at this time, introducing and announce at the same moment that the manager of the Yankees for the 1980 season and hopefully for many years after that will be Number one, Billy Martin. This was the most extraordinary ovation I've seen in my 25 years on the sports beat. Quick note, we'll be cutting during the night to Pete Rose in Atlanta to follow whether or not he can achieve what we, Willie Keeler, has already achieved. But for Billy Martin, a moment that he'll never forget and maybe New Yorkers will never forget because in a strange way, this man, a dead-end kid who turned good, a depression kid, a kid without the great skills who somehow typified the Yankees, reached the soul of a city. And you're looking at him right now, live in this booth, Billy Martin. Billy, some quick questions. You know our time problems. Item number one, your health. Is there a spot on your liver? There's a slight spot, but it's nothing serious. How quickly can it be removed? Will it stop you from managing? It'll never stop me from managing. Howard, I can manage tomorrow if I wanted to. Uh... My doctors tell me in a couple of months it'll go away. Okay, next question. How do you know, have you signed a contract for 1980? I've agreed with George Steinbrenner on 1980 and 81 and his words is bond. But not in writing? Well, we haven't got to that yet. What will you do the next year and a half or nearly that? Well, I want to do a lot of fishing, a lot of hunting, get to know my son a lot better and uh, be with him a lot more. And most of all, I'm gonna do some scouting for the Yankees also. Now, you have admitted you made the statements attributed to you. Steinbrenner has accepted that. You were contrite, and he says he understood the mood in which you made them. But there is another problem. That problem is Reggie Jackson. If he was still with the Yankees, if and when you come back, would you manage the club? Oh, definitely. I'll manage anybody, Howard, in order to win. And uh, as you know, a manager doesn't always get along with all of his players, but the most important thing is to motivate him and get him to win. Do you feel that Jackson was a factor, at the very least, in what happened to you last week? Well, I think it was uh, because of what happened. My emotions made me say things that I shouldn't have said, and uh, I'm very sorry I said them, but uh, I, don't, I think that everybody at one time or another does make a mistake. Your relationship with the owner, George Steinbrenner, 
has been a series of ups and downs. In the long run, for a period of time, you were able to ameliorate them. But what about now, in spite of the apparent agreement? How do you know you'll be back in 80? Because after talking with George and seeing how he felt and how his emotion was, when I got that ovation, uh, he had tears in his eyes like I did. And I just can't thank the man enough. I, I think he's just a great individual, and I'm going to break my neck for him. That's the way it's going to be. Is it true that you had other job offers? Well, yes, I, I guess I could have, uh, Howard, but uh, my one love is the Yankees where I first started, and I, I wanted to do it for the people there. I understand that, but having had other job offers and without a contract in writing, isn't there a lingering worry in your mind in view of past discord with the owner? Well, Howard, I think I'm like you. I never run scared. Okay. Good luck to you. Thank you for being with us. Thank Billy's going to be with us all evening right here in Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia with the Mets going against the Phils and with Nino Espinosa going against Ruth Van. But right now, let's go to Jim Lampley in Atlanta and the Pete Rose story. Hello, everybody. This is Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where one of the biggest Atlanta Braves crowds of the entire year has turned out to follow one of the biggest sports stories of recent years. And that story, of course, is the story of Pete Rose. There's a good look at Pete Rose as he steps in, and the graphic tells the whole story, attempting to tie the 44-game hitting streak, which was completed in 1897 by Wee Willie Keeler, playing for the Baltimore Orioles, who were at that time in the National League. And there is the hand from the Atlanta crowd as Rose steps in against Phil Necro. I'm Jim Lampley reporting to you. And I will be here all night to keep you abreast of developments in the Pete Rose story, which has become, as I said before, one of the biggest sports stories of recent years. 43-game hitting streak on the line as Rose steps in against Phil Necro. He's faced Necro only once this year on May 30th here at Atlanta. Rose led off the game with a single against Necro and went on to go one for three in the ballgame. The first pitch is called strike one by home plate umpire Andy Olson. Looked like a knuckleball, and Rose expects to get a steady diet of knuckleballs from Necro. Thirteen times in the streak, Rose has had hits in his first time at bat. Inside, the count is now one and one. I said 13, I should say 14 times in the streak, Rose has had hits in his first time at bat. Pitch is low, and now the count is two and one. Rose generally very tough on Braves pitching, but Necro is the Braves pitcher he least likes to face. Three and one, now the count to Pete Rose. So Pete Rose gets a base on balls in his very first appearance at the plate tonight. And you can hear the reaction from the Atlanta crowd, not happy about seeing the ball up out of the strike zone against Pete Rose. There will be more chances, but the first chance is gone. So we'll be back when Pete Rose hits again. Now we return you to your ball game. ABC's Monday Night Baseball, live from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight, the New York Mets take on the Eastern Division leaders of the National League, the Philadelphia Phillies. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Chevrolet. Like baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie, Chevrolet is an American favorite. By Gillette, makers of Right Guard deodorant, available in stick or spray. Don't get dressed without it. Mexico, who also brings you quality automotive products you can trust. And by Allstate Insurance Companies, you're in good hands with Allstate.
insurance high? I don't know. I think it's too much. How would I know? Compare with Allstate. Compare? compare? Bring in your policy and compare rates. If you have a good deal, we'll tell you. But for many, chances are we've got a better deal. We've got a better deal. Allstate might save you some money, but you'll never know until you bring in your policy and compare. Oh, that's a good deal. <laughs> what do you want to save on homeowner's insurance? Yeah. <laughs> Allstate wants to help. That's a promise from us, the good hands people. The day with the kids and you want to be buried at sea. <laughs> Did you take those pictures today? Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get these developed. Beautiful color. What camera is that? Polaroid's Wednesday. Is it hard to use? Simplest camera in the world. Try it. Just press the button. Hey, gang. That's Polaroid's in film. It develops twice as fast now, in just a few minutes. I love it. Look at all those smiling spaces. <laughs> the world's simplest camera. Polaroid's one step. These are the blueprints for an automotive revolution. This is the J.C. Penny shock absorber. Its unique patented metering pin adjusts the ride automatically while you drive. So you get the control of heavy-duty shocks when the going gets rough, and the ride of original equipment shocks when the road is smooth. And if it ever fails, return it. We'll replace it free for as long as you own your car. The J.C. Penny shock absorber. It's the last shock absorber your car will ever need. Major League Baseball presents Big League Tips. Look what you can learn about a baseball game from reading the box score. Each player's times at bat, runs scored, hits, and runs batted in. The inning by inning score, who made errors and extra base hits, how each pitcher did, how long the game took, and the attendance. Box scores help you spot the hot pitchers and hitters. Add to your baseball enjoyment. Read a box score today. Baseball fever. Catch it. The proceeding was a message on behalf of Major League Baseball. On a hot, muggy night in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the New York Mets have come south to take on the Phillies. As you look at the standings of the Eastern Division of the National League, you can see the Phillies are not pulling away from the rest of the pack in the National League East, as many people thought they might. The Chicago Cubs, though, have stumbled recently at 51, 51, and 500. The Cubs, with a young, strong pitching staff, may not fade away. And Pittsburgh, perhaps, getting ready to make themselves a run. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, back from some 17 days in the Hawaiian sun, and I must tell you that I enjoyed it. I have come back to rather quick rationale of reality here in Philadelphia, though. When you look at the and listen to all the problems that are rampant in the game of baseball with healthy people this year, you just can't seem to find a ball club that is solid through the ranks with all of its starters in good shape to play the game. And here we come up on dog days, the time when pennants are won and lost. Take the Phillies. Fine record at home, a record of 36 and 15, but can't win a lick on the road. And they come up next week, play nine games against Pittsburgh, which could be a very decisive time in the 1978 season for this Philadelphia ball club. The other part of our story tonight will be Pete Rose. Let's get to that right now with Howard Cosell and Don Drysdale. Well, thank you very much, Keith. And yes, Pete Rose is the overriding story in baseball tonight. You just saw him walk his first time up down at Atlanta. I'm with two men who understand something about the problems of continuing a hitting streak like this. Billy Martin and Don Drysdale. Don, why don't you and Millie, uh, Billy discuss those problems? Well, thank you very much, Howard. And of course, when you talk about hitting streaks or streaks of any kind. Uh, Billy, I know I've had a lot of streaks and many of them have been bad, but of course right now you're talking about Pete Rose and you know I saw Pete the other day and uh, what he made, he made a statement, I believe this is so true. The one time that you get a chance to relax and that appears is when you put the uniform on, the game starts and you go out across the lines. No doubt about it, uh, Don. You know the question and answer period in the clubhouse by the press putting the pressure on you. You think you can do it, can you break, break Joe DiMaggio's record and naturally that keeps building up and then then when you get out in the field, it's, it's you, Pete Rose, out there. Now, it's all together a different game. You're relaxing yourself again. And, of course, you and Joe DiMaggio, great friends. And uh, there has to be uh, things in the back of your mind about this streak that's going on. Well, there he is. Uh, you know, I love Joe D so much. And, uh, of course, there's a lot of nostalgia there. And uh, I, I'm not saying I'm against Pete Rose, but uh, I just kind of reach for that little old-fashioned Italian from San Francisco. <laughs> Fellas, we're about ready for the ball game. The Mets against the Phils. Let's give it back to Keith Jackson. We'll resume at appropriate moments during the course of the game. We'll be cutting, of course, to Atlanta and the Pete Rose story. 
All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. On the mound tonight for the Philadelphia Phillies, as you see the lineup, the batting order for the New York Mets. Elliot Maddox is over at third base tonight. He'll be looking at Dick Ruthven, the big right-hander. Tim Foley hits second in the order at shortstop. Steve Henderson in left field. William Montanez at first base is hitting cleanup. Bad dude Stearns, Big John, back of the plate. Number 12, he's going to be a good one, everybody seems to think. Lee Mazzilli, of course, in the batting order for the... Number six position, Joel Youngblood will hit number seven. Doug Flynn will bat eight, and Nino Espinosa will do the pitching for the Mets tonight. Seven and eight on the season for the big right-hander, Ruthven. He is, however, five and two since coming to the Philadelphia Phillies from the Atlanta Braves. And the first pitch is called strike one by Paul Rungi during the plate umpiring tonight. Fouled at the plate by Elliot Maddox. And it is strike two. Maddox at 265 on the season with a couple of home runs and 24 runs batted in. He has some cartilage trouble, sore knees, and uh, playing at third base may give him a little respite with those sore wheels. Beat on the ground to the right side, a very high hopper, and the play made by Richie Hepner. One gone here in the top of the first inning from Philadelphia Veteran Stadium. Remember, we're playing on Astro Turf, so very quick. Improves as you look at the Philadelphia defense with Luzinski, Maddox, Martin, Schmidt, Boa, Sizemore, Hebner, and Boone and Ruthven. Sizemore is also the name of a brilliant offensive lineman on the Eagles. But this is quick turf, and the batter has a big lift. Dick Ruthven delivers the pitch to Tim Foley for Kirk one. And I think the big thing you have to think about here, it's rained all day in Philadelphia. The rain lit up about 3 o'clock this afternoon. You see the wet spots on that infield. Of course, the outfield is all wet. They had the big machine out there sucking off a lot of that water here prior to the game tonight. And that's where you have to think about the ball skidding on you a little bit on that artificial turf. It won't take you'll take a true hop, but it'll come out there a line drive. It'll skid on you, and if you're not careful, it can scoot by you. At one and two, Foley hits it to the right side, flat by Hebner, two down. That Philadelphia defense you looked at a few moments ago has fewer errors in the National League than any other team. They have committed only 71, the Dodgers 80, and the Mets are next with 82, which tells you something about an improving New York Met ball club. As Joe Torre indicated, it's a bunch of youngsters beginning to get their act together, beginning to melt some. Maybe so. I was amused by the sign on the Philadelphia scoreboard, great hands. When Hefner played third for the <laughs> Pirates, he was renowned for poor throws. <laughs> Here is young Steve Henderson, 273 hitter, nine home runs, and Ruthven's low and away. Ruthven was originally scheduled to pitch Saturday, but he has a sore right side, tightens up on him. Threw an awkward pitch, stumbled on the mound, pulled a rib muscle, and if you're earning your living throwing a baseball at 85, 90 miles an hour, you're not going to be very successful with sore rib. Get on the ground to the second baseman, Teddy Sizemore. Throws him out, and so the New York Mets are gone in order in the top of the first inning, and the Philadelphia Phillies will be coming right up. You know, a lot of people think Billy and I argue all the time. Actually, we agree on just about everything, right, Bill? <laughs> you betcha, George. We even drink the same beer. Light beer from Miller's. Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. And the best thing is, it tastes so great. No, George, the best thing is less filling. No, Bill, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy? Yeah, George. You're fired. Oh, not again. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet. They go together in the good old USA. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet. You sure do have a taste for Chevys, America. Come on over to your Chevy dealer and see what's new today. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. The lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies leading off Gary Maddox hitting at 294, eight home runs. After him, there's Gary Maddox right now. 294, eight home runs. And a swifty but not stealing recently. 
the glue of the ball club, Larry Boa, the shortstop at 309. And then Mike Schmidt, still trying to make it a decent season for himself and only 256 with 13 homers. Luzinski, very hot now, 263, 25 homers. Richie Hebner, always a class hitter at 270 with 12 home runs. Bobby Boone, an all-star catcher at 268 with nine homers. Then Jerry Martin at 287, six homers. Teddy Sizemore back in the lineup, 225. Finally, Dick Ruthman, now the master of a hesitation in his delivery with a suddenly a quiet control that makes him effective. On the mound for the New York Mets, young right-hander Nino Espinosa, six footer, 185 pounder, 24 years of age, out of the Dominican Republic. His record reflected there. He has, however, had very little success against these Philadelphia Phillies. 0-1 in 1978 and 3 and 5 in his lifetime. He lost 9-4 last outing here in Philadelphia. And the first pitch is low and away to the leadoff man for the Phillies, Gary Maddox. I think that's a tip off right there to some of the problems that the Phillies have been having in having Maddox leading off. He hits the ball to the right side, moving over and making the catch as Joel Youngblood for out number one. But Bake McBride is normally the man that Danny Ozark would have in the leadoff position. He's laid up, can't play right now, and so it means that they have to put the valuable Mr. Maddox at the top. The New York defense shapes up that way. The outfield, Henderson, Mazzilli, and Youngblood inside. It's Maddox, Foley, Flynn, Montagnier, Stearns back at the plate, Espinosa on the mound. Lindsey Nelson had a perhaps revealing comment a little while ago when he said, we won a game in Philadelphia last year. <laughs> Sprayed foul left side over in the picnic area. We can't talk enough about that guy, Larry Bow at the plate. Billy Martin with us was the American League manager in the All-Star game, and he talked with me before the game about the way Boa holds the Phillies together and respected him as the All-Star shortstop. I think he's right now in the lead, too, as the potential Golden Glover, finally, in the National League. Concepcion has had a few more bobbles this year at Cincinnati than normal. On deck, it is Mike Schmidt, and Boa takes it low. I like him, Don, because Boa was outspoken about the fact that he's felt he's always been underpublicized and overlooked, not given the credit that was his due. Hit to the left side. Should be playable easily enough for Henderson. He's there and two down. I think really the big thing uh, that Howard said a little while ago that Boa is kind of the backbone. He's the glue of this ball club. He's certainly the glue of that infield. And of course, he's had some tough shortstops to go head and head against in National League, but I think over through the hall, the long haul, why his name stands right up there amongst all the fine ones that they have in this National League. Here's the key man for Philadelphia, Mike Schmidt. Pitch from Espinosa is outside. Schmidt at a 2.56 batting average. He frankly admits he's trying to salvage the season, but against Espinosa this year, 9 of 19 with four home runs. Beats that one on the ground. The third baseman Maddox has it. Throws and gets him. And so the Philadelphia Phillies are gone in order. After one inning of play, there is no score at Veterans Stadium. We'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local stations. This is ABC. The manager of the New York Mets, Joe Torre. Grim visage much of the time because he's deeply involved. Before the game, he talks with Howard about his team. Joe, capsulize for me, if you will, where you think you've established improvement this year. Well, Howard, when we started the season, I never made any promises about wins or losses. I just felt that we were going to have a, a good ball club and we we're going to fight and uh, be close. And we played about 46 or seven one run games, and I think we've established an infield that turns the double play. Uh, helps our young pitchers get out of jams and uh, a club that's only a little experience away from being very competitive. Three game comments of Mets manager Joe Torre at the plate. William Montanez, John Stearns will follow. Lee Mazzilli will be the third man. One of his best seasons in baseball for Willie right here. 1971 had 30 home runs and 99 runs batted in for the Phillies runner up to Earl Williams of Atlanta for the National League Rookie of the Year voting that year. He's well traveled. He played in Atlanta a year ago. Came to the Mets. He's hitting at 271 with 14 home runs. 
So a pair of former Braves involved here and struck ball by Paul Runge. Two and two. Pete Rose got a free pass to first base first time up. He figures to be up in the top of the third inning. If he does come at that time, we'll be able to go show you what happens. Inside. Rose, 43 straight games in which he has had a base hit. Against Phil Necro, he's one for three in 1978, the tough knuckleballer. That is foul. You know, Keith, last week while you were sunning yourself in Hawaii, working stiffs like Drysdale and me were talking about individual achievement records. We talked about the difficulty and the specialized age of the game with relievers being brought on so promptly of winning 300. But one record will never be broken. Lou Gehrig, 2130 consecutive games. That ball is hit high in the air to the left side. Third baseman Schmidt comes into the foul ground in the coaching box. Makes the catch. One down. Keith, you know, you and Howard have heard me on these Monday night games talk about how the game is different on this AstroTurf or the artificial turf, whatever it might be. And I, in my opinion, it is a different game. But I just wondered, with Billy Martin in the booth right now, Billy, do you have to manage different on this type of artificial turf? Uh, yes, I believe you do. I think your outfielder has got to be a little more careful on the bounce balls, uh, you know, fly balls that drop out there. Infielders can play a little deeper. Uh, you have to because the ball is going to get by you a little quicker. John Stearns at bat with one out and nobody on against Ruthven. John used to bust helmets for Eddie Crowder, the Colorado Buffaloes, out in Boulder. Went on, chose professional baseball for his career. Joe Torre likes his chances for being very successful. He's hit 11 home runs, 277 average, and he's knocked across 47. Ruthven having his first start tonight in nine days having a little trouble finding the strike zone. That ball is well hit to the left side. Hooking and foul. At home run depth. Now you talk about John Stern busting helmets out there at Colorado and there's one man that'll say amen to that and that's a big man over at Pittsburgh by the name of Mr. Parker in the collision that they had at home place. <laughs> he broke his cheekbone. Put it into John Stearns's head. Thing about Stearns is he's an all around athlete. Fifteen stolen bases already for a catch of Billy Martin. He's closing in on Roger Bresnahan's record. Not too shabby. Three two pitch. Punched up the middle, little handle hit. Sizemore gets him. That was a punched nine just short of second base. <laughs> the batter is Lee Mazzilli, 265 hitter, the center fielder for the New York Mets. This kid, Keith, you can see in the process of development. Had a re he's a good fly catcher to begin with. But he had a recent home run burst and he's beginning to develop a sense of power. After all, 11 home runs, 44 rippies. A most respectable young player with possibly a big potential. Only 23 years of age and right out of Brooklyn. There's a strike. Bob Engel is the first base umpire. Jerry Dale is at second. John McSherry at third. And the man behind the plate, Paul Rundy. Denny Summers coaching at first. Dal Maxville at third. And that's foul. Keep remembering Darrell Maxville in the 67 World Series, playing for the Cardinals at Fenway against the Red Sox. Never known for being able to hit the ball much past the infield. He shot one off the wall at the 420 foot mark for a triple and still recounts the event as it as if it were a daily occurrence in his baseball life. <laughs> I told Dal before the game as you look at some of the scores right there I said boy I said you're wearing a bad number. <laughs> he says you're telling me he said someone booed me the other day he said I didn't know why. I said, You can't be wearing that 53 like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
New baseball rubbed into play, and Ruth Flynn delivers, and Mazzilli takes it, and the count is one and two. Ruthven came back to the Phillies from Atlanta on June 15, and Gene Garber moved down south to the Braves. Garber, since going to Atlanta, has a record of one and one, but he has saved 12 games. Right now, the Phillies, in particular, are hoping that Ruthven finds his stride and can pick him up through the tough months ahead, August and September. That pitch high and tight. Keith, I mentioned earlier the hesitation that's been developed in Ruth Ben's windup. Billy Martin, will you quickly explain what it's doing for him? Well, it's letting his body uh, get into the in front of him, where before probably his arm was always late coming around. Now his arm's coming out in front. Ball is hit high in the air to right field. Playable for Martin. Sides retired. Ruth ben has put six Mets down in order, and we have no score after one and a half. Gonna be a little short. About 70 miles. This is Bob for Texaco Hope in the Gulf of Mexico. This water is 260 feet deep. It can cost up to six times more to drill for oil out here than on land. But we've got to do this if America's to become less dependent on unreliable sources of oil from abroad. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Listen up, team. It's a long ride to Hog Flats. Yeah, all day long. So Starch is going to pass out the Right Guard yeah. deodorant. We got stick or spray. With Right Guard deodorant, stick or spray protects all day. They don't just cover up odor, they help stop odor before it starts. All day long. And it's going to be a long day. Yeah. Right Guard deodorant. Don't get dressed without it. Impossible. America's waking up to the impossible shave. Gillette Atra, the first razor with a head that pivots to follow every contour of your face for closeness with comfort you never thought possible. Impossible. This Atra face-hugging action keeps twin blades at the perfect angle. Such closeness with so much comfort, it's, it's impossible. impossible. Gillette Atra. Yes, the impossible shave is here. Pete Rose steps into the box here in Atlanta for his second appearance of the evening against Phil Necro. A walk in the first inning. There's the attempted bunt or fake bunt, whichever way you interpret it. And now that brings rookie third baseman Bob Horner of the Braves in on the grass. Line drive right at Gary Royster, the shortstop. So. On his first swing of the bat tonight, Pete Rose makes contact and hits the ball hard, but right at Gary Royster, the Atlanta shortstop, and two chances have gone for Pete Rose to match the 44-game hitting streak of Willie Keeler. We take you back to your normal ball game. And so Pete Rose is 0 for 1, having walked the first time in line to shortstop the second time as the game wears on and will continue to keep you apprised of his progress as he seeks to it in his 44th consecutive game. Greg Luzinski, the bull for Philadelphia, takes a strike. Good slider on the outside corner, 25 home runs. Greg now tied with George Foster for the lead in the National League. High in the air, way up. But easily playable for the right fielder, Youngblood, and Luzinski is gone. Richie Hepner now and Bob Boone to follow. I understand that Foster hit his shot yesterday 25th in Cincinnati and they're still looking for <laughs> Hefner a dead pull hitter Nino Espinosa there's a story on Pete Rose the Reds are in Atlanta against the Braves the pitch is low and away to Hefner I tell you, if you're going against Phil Necro, it's advisable to get to him early. Later on, that knuckler. Oh. Pitch bounces at the plate. The alignment by the New York Mets, very interesting. The shortstop is to the right side, right field side of second base. The third baseman is almost in the normal shortstop's position. And Hefner hits it high in the air, sifting back into the stands. In Cincinnati, 
yesterday the Reds put three infielders on the right side put Pete Rose the third baseman into the shortstop slot so what did Reggie Hebner do he bought it three times for three base hits he went five for five actually in the ball game his first five hit game in the major league foul fans just had a quick gander at some of the National League scores Pittsburgh leading Montreal which only scored 19 yesterday the Reds leading the Braves one to nothing although Petey Rose is 0 for 1 having walked and lined out he pulled it good play to the second baseman Flynn and he can't find the ball That young man, Doug Flynn, was of course acquired in the deal for Tom Seaver. And interestingly, when I talked with Joe Torrey before the game, as you look at this again, Torrey said, I don't care whom you name, there is no better defensive second baseman in our league than Doug Flynn. He's the kind we're building on. Well, there was a case right there, Billy Morton, as where he got on that wet turf, and I think he just over, he actually overslid the ball, really. No question about it. He uh, actually went by the ball and it looked like he was going to make the play easy, but the ball got behind him. The first pitch to Bob Boone, the Philly catcher, strike. That was a base hit for Hebner. First hit of the ball game. Philly remembers Boone from the All Star game. Not and favorably. <laughs> and his dad. <laughs> pitch is low. That was a nice scene in San Diego, Keith. Remember? Mm -hmm. Ray Boone. Himself an all star once posing with his son Bob now at the plate. I like the way Bob Boone has structured his life though. He stayed with his studies, got his uh, degree in psychology from Stanford back in 1969. Those spots, the discoloration out on the field is from rain, and it's rained most of the day in Philadelphia. The infield was covered, but some of the water sifted off the tarp when it was taken away. That's why you have the different colors. The runner goes, the pitch is swung on, lifted to center field. And playable. Throw back across. And you've got a double play. <laughs> Everett just flat went to sleep on it. They double him at uh, first base. And so, after two complete innings of play here in Veteran Stadium, we have no score between the Mets and the Phillies. The new Chevy Monza is one car that's really three. When you look at it this way, Monza's a sporty car. When you look at it this way, Monza's a well-equipped car. And when you look at it this way, Monza's an economical car. So for one car that's really three, sporty, well-equipped, and economical, get a Chevy Monza. It's really three cars in one. Kodak. Have instant fun with the handle. Kodak's lowest price instant camera. Nothing to focus. Just aim, shoot, and up pops what nobody else can give you. Bright, brilliant color by Kodak. And after all, isn't color the way to choose an instant camera? Have fun with the handle. All the kids do. Even kids like us. <laughs> and you have fun, fun, fun with the handle made by Kodak. Kodak. Fun, fun, fun. I'm bringing an appetite. Wearing a smile Cause you got so many good things to eat And when I top it off with Tasty Freeze It's more than a meal, it's a treat Right now at Tasty Freeze and Big T Family Restaurants We're preparing all your favorite cooking With a little something extra A good old-fashioned Tasty Freeze dessert It's more than a meal, it's a treat Let's go through that double play one more time. Watch the action and listen to the comments of Billy Martin. Well, uh, Kate, you can see these are the little things in baseball that sometimes are missed. There's Tim Foley giving a beautiful decoy like he's going to receive the ball at second base. He decoyed Hedner right out of the play and then, of course, set up for the double play at first base. Thank goodness the pitcher backed up properly. <laughs> yeah, the Mets were a little reluctant to capitalize on the opportunity. <laughs> one more look at it. Foley's making out that he's going to catch the ball. Hebner, Hebner slides into the play. I stand by my original statement. Richie went to sleep. 
He didn't know how many outs that were. <laughs> I think after that, right now, as you look at it again from another angle, now watch Foley come across like Billy Martin is saying, like he receives the ball, getting ready to throw to first base for the double play. A great job by Foley. He is a fine young shortstop. That's why Tari called some of my, my manager on the field. But Billy was right, of course. It was a beautiful beat call. We go to the top of the third inning for Joel Youngblood, uh, Doug Flynn, and Nino Espinosa. Youngblood and Flynn both coming from the Cincinnati organization to the Mets. Quick note, Keith, in the San, Fran Houston, San Francisco Houston game being carried in another region of the country. Let's look at the pitch. Right in there. Beautiful. And some scores quickly shown. The struggling Red Sox slumping as nobody thought they would without Rooster Burleson facing the Pale Hose who beat Texas twice yesterday. The Yankees leading the Rangers who are shockingly discomfited and Milwaukee and Baltimore tied at two and two. How collided in that Houston San Francisco game with Whitfield has been taken to the hospital for stitches. Doug Flynn takes a strike from Ruthven and Ruthven is popping the ball tonight. He's quick. He's throwing well, Keith. I have not seen Ruthven throw that much, but he's thrown as well tonight as as well tonight as what I've ever seen him throw. Wow. The judge's gun tells us 89 miles an hour on the last fastball. I think the key is what Billy Martin said. With that hesitation and delivery, he's getting the arm out there. A, he gets his whole body thus into the pitch, and B, he's got control that he didn't use to have. I would think too though uh, Don coming from Atlanta which is a launching pad uh, to this ballpark where the ball doesn't carry quite as well and with a ball club that probably figures to get you more runs too that's been able to clean him up a little bit is concentrating and actually using more fastball but that one is stroked into right center field for a base hit. Well I'm sure that he has a little more peace of mind up here when he goes and looks at that lineup that is playing behind him. But Billy has hit it really right on the nose because I think a lot of people in the viewing audience can kind of go inside it with a golf swing or something like that. And what you're doing, you're taking the, either the club back or taking your body and turning your body. You're hesitating just a little bit to where you get that forward motion all coming together. Espinoza puts it down. Flynn breaks to second. Espinoza tagged out, sacrificing himself with two out. The Mets have a base runner at second. Elliot Maddox. The top of the order in the top of the third, no score. Well, he's played for you, Billy. It's been charged by him. He didn't like it. It seemed like he was in a trade, and uh, it's just too bad the way it worked out, but he's, he's a real fine ball player. Ruth and checks the runner Flynn misses ball one. I'm tight. Good evening. Well if you're not awake by now that will wake you up as you look at Joe Torre and his pitching coach Rube Walker. That pitch does get your attention. <laughs> Charlie Dressen called high neck in. Takes him outside, misses. The one thing about Maddox tonight, fellas, is that he is playing third base, a position that we haven't seen him play that much before, but it is certainly no stranger to him because he played that in college. So he is well aware of what goes on down there. How did he play it in college? <laughs> that one's tight, and Elliot Maddox walks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is the first walk issued tonight by Dick Ruthven. And for the first time in tonight's game, we have two base runners with two out. The batter is Foley. Tim, shortstop. You're gonna, not going to believe me, guys, but Billy Martin's with us tonight, and Tim Foley reminds me of Billy Martin. He's not Billy Martin, not as good, but he's the kind of kid who gets more from himself than the skills would lead you to believe he could as we look at a call strike. 
And that's the story of Billy Martin, the player. Thank you. There's a lot of people that would like to have this young man right here because you mentioned about Torrey saying he's the captain of that infield. He knows how to play the game. Swings through a high fastball. And that is probably maybe the one bad fault that Tim has instead of using the whole ballpark to hit with. He'll sometimes try and overswing, and he's not the kind of hitter that can swing that hard. He must use a complete ballpark. Sharp shot, third base. Schmidt goes the short way to second and gets the third out. So the New York Mets manifest the first threat of tonight's ball game, but they come away empty, and the score continues nothing, nothing. <laughs> Except for the insurance and closing. Oh, well, what insurance company? Ah, they're all the same. <laughs> all states different. Different. How? We give a 10% discount for newer homes. Oh? It's a 10% discount. Now 10% off our rate. On basic homeowner's insurance for houses five years old or less. All states different, all right. Good hand. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> when it takes being different to be better, all state will do it. That's a promise from us. The good hands people. Only two miles to go, Slugger. Uh, it's easy for you to say, Doc. You've got the advantage. Uh, I certainly do. The advantage is the new tire from B.F. Goodrich. It's everything Goodrich has ever learned about making radial tires, and they made the first American radio. Goodrich. Hey, remember when I was fighting a kid and looked up in the fifth and got KO'd? I was looking at their brum. A Goodrich brum. A Goodrich brum. A winner. He's not. B.F. Goodrich. The other guys. In the latter part of the 20th century, a medication was created that killed athlete's foot fungus on contact. This medication is found in Aftate for athlete's foot. Aftate relieves burning, itching, cracking. Aftate for athlete's foot. With a medication that kills athlete's foot fungus on contact. It'll be the bottom third of the order for the Phillies, Jerry Martin, Ted Sizemore, and Dick Ruthven. And it was Jerry Martin who was almost the villain yesterday in Cincinnati because uh, before Pete Rose got his base hits, Martin robbed Rose as he went deep in right, and made a great backhanded catch off a drive by Pete. A but functional he... ball player, Keith, can do a lot of things. Catch the ball, occasional power. Yes, says Paul Rungi. That means strike, folks. That's one and one. I like the way his dad umpired. He said that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think foul. I heard it more than anybody else. <laughs> you know, Billy Martin's in the booth with us, Don. I go back to the 66 World Series. Levine had shut out the Yankees in the sixth game. Jackie. That was one to nothing. Jackie had hit the line shot over 56. I said 56, Don. We'll get to it later. That's high to the right side. Long run, and the center fielder, Lee Mazzilli, calls off young blood and makes the catch. Jackie had hit the line drive over Slaughter's head to win the game. I'll never forget Billy Martin in the clubhouse singing the hit song of the day. K Sara Sara. Whatever will be will be. But what was was Johnny Cux the next day shutting out the Dodgers and Yogi hitting a grand slammer off Don Newcomb. Elson Howard also hit a homer and uh, I believe Moose Card Ripon also. Espinosa pitches now to Ted Sizemore who's uh, mountain of scrap in the infield for the Philadelphia Phillies but still struggling with that hand that he broke in three places. Nails it but just foul. Teddy figures he has 70 percent strength back in the hand that he broke. He took the sponge off the handle of the bat last week but he is still using the sponge and the glove while he works the field the scores from about the American League Yankees two zip over Texas after three no score White Sox Red Sox in the National League that's what's going on that ball is hit up right center field and going for it making it look easy is Mazzilli ball seemed to get up and then kind of hung there for him. I like that kid Don 
Mazzilli, I do too. He's just a young boy, and he, you know, he had a month or so, and it wasn't that long ago where he, every time I looked at the box scores, why well, he had a few home runs going for him. He had a burst. He's up to 11, and says he can hit 20 a year at least. He really believes that. A 150 hitter, a Ruth and the pitcher. Right. Grew up in Brooklyn. Espinosa throwing hard. Low. I like Espinosa too. He's throwing well. He's nice, free, and easy, and it appears that he's got good stuff. Low. Tari has some very interesting things to say about Espinosa and what his problems have been. Perhaps Chuck Howard, our producer, will find a time to play it later. Two two the count. Two out, nobody on, no score. Billy's batting, bottom of the third. Just glancing at Espinosa facially, it looks a little bit like Juan Marichal when you first glance at him. Not if you're John Roseboro. Yeah. <laughs> I think Juan had his hair that long, but he does. He's got kind of, he sure does. Up the middle. So Ruth from the pitcher gets the second hit of the night for the Phillies. Up comes Gary Maddox. Gary Maddox, who was a running fiend earlier in the season when we were here. You'll remember, Keith, Larry Bow had said, let's start running because the Phillies weren't winning, and so they did. But Gary Maddox, troubled recently by a bad ankle, and suddenly the base stealing has stopped. Only two stolen bases in the last 36 games. Pete Rose will bat in the top of the fifth and we'll be reporting to you on it immediately. Pitch to Maddox. Swing and a miss. Ruth and the pitcher is on first base having singled up the middle. I still think Gary Maddox is worth more to you down in the bottom of your batting order though. He's in the leadoff position because of Bake McBride's injury and that's fouled away. McBride has not started since July 17. He jammed the right wrist when he dove back into second base in a game against Houston. He's had his hand in a cast for 10 days. He took it off last Thursday. 0 oh and 2 pitch to Maddox. High. Worth remembering, too, that when McBride came over from St. Louis a year ago to join this ball club, he really jacked them up. They got things going. And Maddox is out of there. And so are the Phillies. So we've traveled along through three innings of play. Good tough pitching game going on between two big right handers. See what's new today. Last spring, 227 specially equipped Chevy Nova police cars were delivered to the Jacksonville, Florida Sheriff's Department. Now, that's a tall order, but no surprise, because law enforcement agencies in 47 states have made Chevy Nova America's best-selling police compact. Now, a lot of the things the police look for in a new car are the same things you'd look for in a new car. Reliability, performance, and value. Chevy Nova, a wanted car, now more than ever. You know, a lot of people think Billy and I argue all the time. Actually, we agree on just about everything, right, Bill? Yeah, you betcha, you, George. We even drink the same beer. Light beer from Miller's. Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. And the best thing is, it tastes so great. No, George, the best thing is less filling. No, Bill, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy? Yeah, George. You're fired. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Can you believe it? I've really gone and done it. Finished school and joined the army. But can I really cut it? Well, I think I'm gonna get the education of my life. If you're out of high school and you're ready for the education of your life, join the people who've joined the army. I think I'm gonna get the education of my life. And I think it's just exactly what I need.
we've already mentioned this young man, Larry Boa, shortstop all-star for the Philadelphia Phillies. Before the ball game, Howard Cosell talked with Larry Boa. Larry, it's been said that your team somehow plays only hard enough to make sure you win the pennant, that basically there's no competition in your division. I've been reading a lot about that, and I hope some of the ballplayers aren't reading it. Uh, it seems like sometimes we do go through the motions. Some guys aren't motivated enough, and uh, I don't know what the problem is, but uh, if we continue to do this, we're going to be pressed by the Cubs and Pirates, so it's, it's very important that we get our act together against these second division ball clubs, because if we continue to lose against them, uh, we're going to be watching the playoffs in October. Steve Henderson, Willie Montanez, and John Stearns are the scheduled hitters, and Henderson's up there with a one-strike count, and Randy Lurch is warming up in the Philadelphia bullpen. Just in case Ruthven has some trouble with that sore ribs. Exactly so, Keith. And Henderson, of course, regarded by most as the key figure in the Siva trade. Shoots a bullet to right center, base hit. He's a good hitter. But in truth, not a complete ball player. He cannot throw. You don't win pennants with half ball players. Is that right, Billy Martin? Well, if the other half is real good. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Montagnier has taken his time coming to the plate. You know, the funny thing about this game of baseball, too, you get somebody that's a little short on one side or the other, and there's an old saying about this game of baseball, you can't hide them. It'll always, the ball will always find them. They'll always come up in a crucial situation or whatever it is. It just happens invariably. High bouncer to the right side. Great play by Sizemore. That little rascal is tough. That really was a great play. Had to make an instant reflex decision. Do you let the ball play you? Do you play the ball and try it on the short hop? Right, Billy? That's exactly right, Howard. You never let the ball play you. You always play the ball. Now that, too, is what Billy was talking about earlier on this artificial turf. You let that ball take that second hop, and you don't know where it's going to bounce to. Right there, you know you've got the little short in-between hop. You know you can play it, and Teddy made a fine play on it. John Stearns up, one out. Base runner Henderson at second base. John steps out of the batter's box. Time was not called. And I do believe now that Paul Rungi is saying, son, uh, if you don't want those pitches to count, you better tell me. Well, he does not call time. And of course, that's not automatic. And you see so many umpires today that as soon as a hitter will step out without even calling time, right away they call time. But that is not all automatically. When that pitcher is out there and he's ready to throw and in motion to pitch, you're supposed to stay in the box. You're not supposed to step out. It was, however, low and away, ball one. They go to second. No. Henderson back. Pretty close. Ruthman's pitch. Breaking pitch is in for a strike. It's one and one. Keith, Billy Martin just remarked. In his observation of the ball game, the pickoff attempt was good. Stopped any attempt to steal. Wow. Not, not really trying to pick him off. He just hold him close enough so he won't steal third base with one out. You never saw Jackson play, did you? Washington State. Count your blessings. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think, judge on, judging on his history, and, and I just looked through the, the numbers that the Mets furnished us. Henderson has uh, attempted uh, 14 steals. He's batting 500 on the bases, so he's seven, been caught seven times stealing. But he does have the quickness. Perhaps it is just a matter of becoming a little more student of the circumstance. Which was the story of your career? Got to work at it, whatever you're doing. Here's Mazzilli now with a fly ball to right field. Oh, 
Bounce to Sizemore. The inning is over. The Mets threaten, but they leave Henderson out at second base. And so this ball game rolls right along after three and a half innings of play of no score. I'm fixing up your house, Bozo, with tough paint this time. Right, Dad? Lucite's plenty tough. It resists peeling and cracking. How come? For one thing, it's got mica. Mica? Mm-hmm. Mica's a mineral that reinforces the paint by forming overlapping plates to help make a tough seal. So it resists peeling and cracking. He means Lucite lasts. Now get a dollar refund from DuPont on every gallon of tough sealing Lucite. Look at all the ways heads are turning to Vitalis. Now that I shampoo more, I use Vitalis to keep my hair in condition. Heads are turning to Vitalis. Vitalis before I blow dry helps keep my hair under control. Heads are turning, heads are turning. My aerosol felt stiff with Vitalis on the softer touch. These days, heads are turning to Vitalis in more ways than one. Heads are turning. You know me as Mr. Goodwrench, the professional mechanic who cares about your GM car. But your participating GM dealer also has a Mr. Goodwrench who cares at the service write-up desk and in the parts department. We're all over the service department just to be sure your GM car gets Mr. Goodwrench professional care. You never had it so good. Keep that great GM feeling with Mr. Goodwrench. That's, That's us. us. And genuine GM parts. Espinoza and Ruthven. Both pitchers have allowed two hits in the ball game as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning for Larry Boer, Mike Schmidt, and Greg Luzinski. And the other part of the story tonight, Pete Rose in Atlanta. All right, let's get into that story again. Everybody knows Joe DiMaggio has hit in 56 consecutive games. Some baseball people feel it's the greatest individual achievement in history. Under any circumstances, phenomenal. But Pete Rose, everybody's little guy, everybody's guy who gets the most out of what he has, has hit incredibly in 43 straight games. If he gets a hit tonight, it's 44. He ties Willie Keeler, Wee Willie, who's accredited with the line, hit him where they ain't. But some feel that Honus Wagner was the author of that line. No matter. We're keeping you abreast of the scene with Jim Lampley in Atlanta. Don Drysdale and Billy Martin have previously talked about it at length. Larry Boy hits the ball high in the air to the left side. The shortstop Foley goes back and makes the catch for out number one. Boa came to the ballpark. Look in his locker, you find a bunch of Pete Rose t-shirts in there. He and Pete have been buddies for a long time. <laughs> Most people don't even know the real record. At Washington State, Jackson hitting 72 straight. <laughs> That's right, 0 for 72. Mike Schmidt, Greg Luzinski, and Mike pops it up. The first baseman, Montagnier, foul ground and snaps it. Willie Montagnier, always a hot dog. But for the Mets this year, very, very effective. That's the story on Pete Rose. So far. At, at the plate, Greg Luzinski. With 25 home runs, takes a strike, and he continues to work with Billy DeMars using the videotape, trying to get himself into a solid hitting posture so that muscle memory takes over with the low hot days coming and a lot of double headers facing the Phillies. A lot of double headers. Seven of them and five on the road. One and two the count now. Popped him up. Uh, John Stearns makes it in foul ground, back by the screen. And so Espinosa gets the Phillies in order one more time, and we continue scoreless after four. Hey, if you're going to travel on the interstate highways this year, you want good gasoline mileage. 
Well, that's where the good guys who wear the star come in. Just about wherever you go, you'll find them ready with top quality Texaco products to help your car run more efficiently so it can give you better mileage. So travel with the good guys. They're number one on the interstate highways. And being in business for themselves makes them work even harder for you. Good guys always wear the The Dutch Masters buyers are in France for the international auction of rare African Cameroon tobacco. There are two secrets they must keep to win some of the best leaf for Dutch Masters. The exact leaf they want and the price they'll pay. When their bid is opened by the French auctioneers, they'll learn if they've won some of the best. Taste the taste the world competes for in a Dutch Masters Cameroon whiff. They really are masters at Dutch Masters. You look like you could use some Gatorade. You look like you could use some Gatorade. You worked up a sweat and you started to fade. You look like you could use some Gatorade. There are many ways to work up a thirst, but one way to really quench it with Gatorade Thirst Quencher. The one drink scientifically designed to give your body what it's thirsty for. You look like you could use some. You look like you could use some. The players of the week in the National League, Pete Rose of the Cincinnati Reds, in the American League, Al Oliver of the Texas Rangers. You know the story of Pete Rose. If you haven't, you've been in a hole in the ground. <laughs> Al Oliver, at 32 years of age, has been wearing him out for the last few days with the Texas Rangers, and beginning to pay dividends on the big investment. Well, he's an all-purpose ball player, Keith. Always has been. Good ball player. Rick. Richie Hefner over and foul ground makes the catch on Youngblood for out number one. What I like about Oliver is he has a good mind. A sense of who he is, what he can do, where he's at. He moved over, got the bonus payment, but understood the pressures that would be placed upon him. Now respond. Doug Flynn. Gets that ball well, sending Maddox back in the center. Pretty hard to hit one over his head if you don't hit it out of the ballpark. So Nino Espinosa, Nino Espinosa comes to the plate, and Rose will be leading off in the sixth inning at Atlanta, and we'll be keeping you abreast of that. September 14, 1977, young Espinosa came into this ballpark. Pitched a three hitter and beat Steve Carlton one to nothing. I believe that's the only game the Mets won in Philadelphia in 1977. There's reason perhaps for him having mannerisms on the mound uh, that remind you Don of Juan Marichal because he too is from the Dominican Republic and I would think when he was growing up and learning to play the game of baseball Marichal had to be the biggest hero in, in that country. If you were a pitcher I'm sure that he was. Juan had a great career. Well I was a pitcher. <laughs> but from Brooklyn not the Dominican Republic. Ninety two miles an hour that last pitch by Ruth then. He's throwing. You know, one thing that I've been watching, and watching how many balls have been popped in the air kind of gives you a, a clue of two things that are happening. Either that ball is moving upstairs or they're getting it in on the hitters, and they've been trying to fight it off of them and popping it up. Espinosa is gone with a strikeout. Let's go in order, and we roll along scoreless. Over, Tex. Oh. Sheriff, these Monroe Radio Maddox ride oh. so smooth, you can't even tell your speed. Ride good, eh? Good. <laughs> Read this. If in 60 days you don't agree, four Radio Maddox give you the best ride ever, Monroe will replace them at no charge with any comparably priced shop. Get it set for your car, Sheriff. Yeah. Sure will, boys. Say, Tex, what's a car? We cook something special for dinner. About half the house. <laughs> now what? We can't stay here. Can the insurance help? That takes time. All state helps right away. Our first concern is to take care of you. Here's an advance for food and a place to stay. 
Allstate Homeowners Insurance takes care of the damage, and you... Can we get a place with a kitchen? Sure. Uh, but let's eat out tonight. <laughs> Help when you need it. That's Allstate. And that's a promise from us. The good hands people. Chevy Chevette is the best-selling small car in America because it's a lot of car for the money. New Chevette standard equipment includes a radio, white-walled tires, console, sports steering wheel, 1.6-liter engine, 18 new standard features in all. Front bucket seats plus a wide hatch, carpeting, front disc brakes, rack and pinion steering, and more. The 78 Chevy Chevette. It's a lot of car for the money. No score in this ball game. Both pitchers working with two hitters. Joe Torre high on this young right-hander Nino Espinosa. Well, Nino, he probably for a young pitcher has about as good a control as uh, as you can have. His problem has been inconsistency, and uh, Nino has been uh, the one thing I, I try to stay on him about is he doesn't challenge the hitters enough. He doesn't get on top. He he works from behind. It's ball one, ball two. And he just tries to be too cautious and too careful. And uh, he's got the fastball and the slider and the curveball. I just like to see him get ahead of more hitters. Pre game comment of Joe Torrey on his young right hander. Richie Hebner is the batter. The infield is swung way around to the right side with only one defensive player on the left field side of second base. So Tim Foley occasionally will wander back over just on the left side of second. Hebner had a base hit. But he did pull it to the right side, and Doug Flynn slid across it. Otherwise, he'd have had it. The count is two and one. The ball is hit to left. High in the air for the left fielder, Steve Henderson. And one out. One of the worrisome things I would think for the Philadelphia Phillies will be the series they have coming up where the schedule is drawn. They've got to play the Mets tomorrow, then have a day off, then they play the Pirates nine times in a period of ten days. And they also play St. Louis four times during that same period. And I saw Chuck Tanner at the All-Star game, and Chuck felt that he got all of his people back healthy that he might have enough pitching to make a run in August and September at the Phillies unless they got their act together. The starting pitching core for the Phillies have been having their troubles. And some of those pitchers are going to have to work with three days rest very shortly because they do have so many ball games stacked up, including back to back double headers, for example, on September 3 and 4 against San Francisco and St. Louis. Pete Rose tonight in Atlanta against Phil Necro, the knuckleballer, has walked. Lined out. He'll be coming to the plate again shortly, and we will cover it live for you. Time called on the field, the umpires. Paul Rungi walking down toward the first base umpire, Bob Engel, to have a talk about something. Tony Taylor, the first base coach over there for the Phillies. Billy DeMars, the third base coach, and Taylor joins the conversation. Well, right here, Billy Martin, of course, this is a good friend of yours, Tony Taylor, and I think what Paul Rungi does, he wants him in the box, so he's not going to try and steal any signs. Uh, Tony probably uh, is one of the finest players greatest individuals I've ever had, kind of, ever had the pleasure of managing. He just had a terrific individual. A lot of those uh, first base and third base coaches, they'll move out of that box a little bit to try and get a better angle at those signs if they possibly can. Especially if the catcher opens one leg where you can see his hands. <laughs> Fouled away by Bob Boone, the Philly catcher, with Jerry Martin now on deck. They're having shirt night Sunday. Howard, you going to come back? What's that, sir? They're having shirt night Sunday. You going to come I'm coming back with a shirt that says 53. Drysdale <laughs> wins them all. <laughs> Inside that pitch. Remember Drysdale, Billy? What a hand hunter he was. <laughs> Not in spring training. <laughs> <laughs> That 
shows you a little bit of the strength of Bob Boone. That pitch was up, but it was in a little bit, and he managed to get his hands out through that ball and hit that line drive right out of here. We talked about how the ball at times will carry in this ballpark. That got out of here in a hurry. And the batter is Jerry Martin. The Phillies on top, one to nothing. Finally getting some scoring in the bottom of the fifth inning. This is what's driving Joe Tari crazy. One mistake. He has to put together a ball club. Sharp shot at third for Maddox. Good play by Ellen. Right there you saw a fine play by Maddox who did play third base in college as Don Drysdale noted earlier but who's basically an outfield. But Tari has to put together architecture a ball club but the personnel given to him. He must adapt that personnel to their talents and they make unarchitectured really because of the number of incomplete ball players. They reveal their vulnerability at given points. True Billy? Well, I think a manager has to do what he has to do best and put everybody out there to play and uh, Joe Torre is going to be one fine manager if he is one of the finest ones right now. Ted Sizemore fouled that pitch away. In trying to strengthen the hand, Fluffs the bunt, takes it away high. He has been squeezing putty for one thing, but something new I didn't know about. He puts his hand in a bucket of rice and exercises in a bucket of rice. Never heard of it. Cooked or uncooked? <laughs> it doesn't say. <laughs> Jerry Klein came up with that piece of astounding information. I would <laughs> run down there and ask him. Sires hits it foul again. He made a comment when he was playing with the Dodgers that I thought was very revealing, Don. He said shortly after he actually had gone to St. Louis that living and playing in St. Louis, he seemed to be more a part of the team because living in Los Angeles, everybody was spread out so far. Somebody would live in Thousand Oaks and somebody would live in Orange County and they're 55 miles apart and they only see each other once in a while at the ballpark. Pops it up to the first baseman Montañez and the inning is over. But Bob Boone's 10th home run of the year gives the Philly a 1-0 lead and we'll be back with more at his word from our local station. This is ABC. Line score in the ball game here in Philadelphia. Boone's home run gives the Phillies a one nothing lead. Both pitchers still locked up in an outstanding effort. Espinosa for the Mets and Dick Ruthven for the Philadelphia Phillies. And so with our score one nothing here, we turn our attention once more to the gateway to the south, Atlanta, Georgia, where Pete Rose is coming to the plate. Let's document the story now with Jim Lampler reporting live from Atlanta. Getting ready to go to the top half of the sixth inning here in Atlanta, where Pete Rose will be leading off for the Cincinnati Reds. It will be his third appearance of the evening against Phil Necro. There you see the story so far in the ball game. In the first inning, he walked. In the third inning, he lined out. This is a one-to-one -one ball game between Cincinnati and Atlanta. The Reds got their run on a home run by Johnny Bench in the second inning. The Braves came back to tie it in the bottom of the fourth on a sacrifice fly by Biff Pokorova. Rose has had hits in 43 consecutive games. If he can get a hit tonight, he will tie the all-time National League record of 44, which was compiled in 1897 by Wee Willie Keeler of the Baltimore Orioles, who were then playing in the National League. Keeler played at a time when a foul ball was not charged against a hitter as a strike, so the rules were somewhat different for Keeler. If Keeler were alive today, he would be 106 years old. He was 25 when he compiled that 44-game hitting streak. There's a look at the man who in that year, 1897, went on to bat 432 to lead the National League in hitting. Pete Rose, as I mentioned, has had hits in 43 consecutive games. We Willie Keeler at 44 is the next goal for Rose. And beyond that, there is only one number, one name, 56, Joe DiMaggio. Pressure has been building on Rose for the last two weeks, and he has been under intense scrutiny from fans and media ever since passing Tommy Holmes 
for the modern National League record a week ago in New York. Two times to the plate tonight. In the first inning, he walked on a three and one pitch, a knuckleball high from Necro. This time he takes ball one. In the third inning, he bunted at the first pitch, it was a strike, and then hit the 0 and one pitch on a line to Jerry Royster at shortstop. Pitch is low and the count is now 2-0. and Crowd of over 40,000 here in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. They began arriving here at the ballpark at 5 o'clock this afternoon. They were here en masse to watch Pete Rose take batting practice. Hard hit ball. Past the second baseman, Gilbert, and Pete Rose has done it. A base hit in the 44th consecutive game and Pete Rose moves abreast of Wee Willie Keeler on the all-time list. And everyone in Atlanta Stadium is on their feet. A momentary pause in the game as Jerry Royster, the Atlanta shortstop, gives the ball to Pete Rose. The base hit, which ties Rose at 44 with Wee Willie Keeler. And now, as I mentioned before, there is only one number, one name left as a goal for Pete Rose. 56 games. Joe DiMaggio, 1941. Here's another look at the 2-0 pitch from Phil Necro. A knuckleball up past second baseman Rod Gilbert. A clean single into right field. No trouble for the official scorer on that one. And Pete Rose has kept it alive. He's been hitting over 400 from the left side of the plate during the streak. With the walk and the line out to Royster, he is now one for two on the evening. So that's the story from Atlanta. Pete Rose facing a tough pitcher. Phil Necro has done his job. He has the base hit. And now we return you to the ball game in your area. All right, Jim. So Pete Rose marches on 44 consecutive games. In the top of the sixth inning for the Mets, Elliott Maddox walked. Tim Foley hit into a sharp 5-4-3. Third, second, first double play. Henderson grounded to the shortstop. Was thrown out. The inning is over, and the score continues. Philadelphia won. The New York Mets nothing. And it's still very much a pitcher's duel. Sears National Automotive Values. The Sears 48, a maintenance-free battery. A battery loaded with starting power is now on sale. The Sears 48, now only $36.99. You save $8. From the people who brought you the die-hard battery comes the muzzler, the aluminized muffler from Sears. Muzzler. Only $19.99 installed at Sears. One thing cigar lovers agree on is this, House of Windsor cigars. Even Clem Cadiddlehopper knows they're made from select imported domestic tobaccos. Sheriff Deadeye likes the choice, Palmer, Sportsman, or Panatella. And Freddy the Freeloader can tell a House of Windsor cigar is quality and value all rolled into one. And who knows more about value? In pack or box, House of Windsor, where quality still counts. The Kellys have a way to save gasoline from the ground up. A steel-belted radial called the Kelly Gas Pincher. When we tested a set of gas pinchers against our non-radials, the gas pinchers pinched up to 31.7 more miles out of a tank of gas. That's hundreds of more miles a year with the gas pinchers. Mets retired, key double play. In the top of the sixth inning, the big play for Dick Ruthven as the score continues, Philadelphia one, New York Mets nothing. And now, with Dick Ruthven at the plate, here's another big right-hander, Don Drysdale. All right, Keith Ruthven single his first time at bat, and Foley a fine play throws, but they won't get him. That goes into the seats, bounces off the spectators, and Ruthven will go to second base. 
Now that's got to be credited a hit and an error on the shortstop as you look at it one more time. Foley made a good play just getting to the ball, Billy Martin. And that was a great play, no question about it. He came up thrown. Very tough. Ball had slipped out of his hands. Might have been a little wet. Now you look at it one more time. That ball hit to the hole. Foley a long way to go. And had he not even had the ball slip out of his hand, you see there a little parachute throw over there. And Montanez no chance to get it. It hopped against the fans in that first base side and Rufin's at second base. And we go to the top of the order. Here's Gary Maddox. The right field deep enough it should advance Rufin. The catch by Youngblood and Rufin doesn't go. Don't blame him. Nice <laughs> throw. Uh, Rufin stays at second base. There's one gone and here's Larry Boer. Boa tonight is flying to left and he's popped to short. So Larry's over two. It's one to nothing Philadelphia. John Stern, the catcher, looking into the dugout and trying to get some long distance communications with his catcher, Joe Torre. Left hander Jim Cott throwing in the bullpen, and Jim might be just getting in a little exercise. A warm night in Philadelphia. Now well, that's not a bad play Billy with Maddox over at third you've got a good runner Boa Maddox in an unfamiliar position you've got Ruthman at second base and a chance to have runners at the corner first and why would you bring up an, an attempted bunt with Billy Martin. Yeah. <laughs> well I think it is a smart play you got Smith coming up who can hit the long fly ball and score the run. Don. And of course Mike Schmidt on deck. They said right there, Ruffin got a late break, and they're going to have to hold him at third. As Youngblood gets it in, it goes by, and there's the ever alert ball going to second base. Now, the second error of the inning, and there's a case of how little things do mean a lot. That'll be an error on the right fielder. Did not have to make the throw that way. Actually could have ran the ball all the way back now in. That's Ruthven. a good call by the official score. Oh, it has to be an error Final. on him. Well, that's missing the cutoff, man. Those are the little that's things. Right. And very aggressive, beautiful baseball playing by the shortstop. There's the Pete Rose star. I just can't believe it. He's tied We Willie Gill. Billy, your observation. That, Billy Mark. That's just sensational. You know, uh, Watching Pete Rose play, every child in the United States should try to copy his style just by being a hustler. It does not take any ability to hustle, and I'm very proud of Pete Rose. Now here's Mike Schmidt, the infield about halfway. He's bounced to third and popped to first. They will walk him intentionally, and they'll go to the bull. They'll go to Greg Luzinski. It's going to be interesting when we come back. We've been sitting here in between innings, and Billy and myself have been talking about John Stearns and how he sets up behind the plate and how at times catchers can give a sign away, whether it be a fastball or a curveball. In this case, you'd almost have a pretty good idea with the way Stearns is moving around, Billy, about when the fastball is coming. Correct, uh, Don. When he wants the ball inside the hitter, he moves inside. And the on deck hitter can actually give the sign to the batter. When he wants the ball outside, he stands outside. Some catchers actually jump up out of their squat for a fastball and step out slow for the curveball. So there are some ways that you could pick up the signs by just watching the catcher. And of course, if you're at second base, you can give the locations because here you have a right handed hitter, you have a right handed pitcher, and it turns sets that glove inside you know you're not going to throw a curveball in there you better be looking for some heat no and doubt about it Luzinski's a hitter bases loaded a Phillies a chance to break it open Luzinski has four career grand slam home runs. there you saw Stearns moving away okay when you're out there why it's kind of you're on your own now he's inside he was inside on that pitch and it was a fastball in on Luziski a little check swing foul away. And we'll see where he goes this time. 
There it is again. Inside. Fastball. And a base hit down the left field line. One run to score. Here comes Boa to score. The third base is Schmidt, and it's three to nothing, Philadelphia. got to say that the pitcher Ruthman actually helped himself quite a bit. Now watch Stern. Watch where he's located. There it is. Billy just we talked about. Fastball and the bull got around on it. It was in a good location too. Look at that. That's not even a strike. And just inside the bag that's how strong that big guy is. Now they're going to walk Hebner. And they'll go to Bob Boone, who homered his last time at bat. That same pitch would have been a uh, thumb buster for me. <laughs> <laughs> now two runs in for the Phillies here in the last half of the sixth inning. Two runs on three hits. There have been two New York airs. Now that is just an idea right there of how little things happen now games are won and lost how pennants are won and lost the difference between a first division ball club and a second division ball club. It's definitely the little things and you know a lot of people think it's a home run or the other things it's really the little things in baseball. I remember one year Monk Myers was pitching in the World Series. We had every pitch he could throw and Mickey Mantle knew it when he saw that curveball coming hit in the upper deck in the Brooklyn Stadium. <laughs> Well, right now they're having a little conference at the mound as right hander Dale Murray gets up and starts to throw in the Met bullpen. There's some scores in the National League Pittsburgh 2 to nothing over Montreal. Cincinnati Atlanta tied up 1 1. The story there Pete Rose has it in his 44th consecutive game and Houston 2 to nothing over San Francisco in the fifth inning. Now that wild, wild west in the National League drawing ever closer. There is the American League scores. Toronto, 6 to 3 over Detroit. The Blue Jays are playing good ball right now. And the big game, 2 to nothing, Cleveland over Kansas City. Boston, 1 to nothing over Chicago. This is Bob Boone with the bases loaded. He has one career Grand Slam home run. Toronto's winning, Don. Toronto defeating Detroit. There's a guy sitting next to me, might have been the manager of Toronto. Right now, there's a manager that's a little edgy down on that Met bench, Joe Torrey, with a count, two balls and no strikes. Ball three. Here's a case, Billy, where I've never understood if you've got somebody on that infield. You can't go back out there again or you got to take him out but someone's got to call time and just go out and slow him down. Someone's got to take charge. Well Don we have flyers to have signs with my infielders uh, with the third baseman the second baseman and the first baseman. I'd give him a sign to let him go out there slow him down give him some time to you know get control of himself again. Uh, and I agree with you 100 uh, percent. One of the infielders have to do it. If the catcher doesn't one of the infielders have to. Espinosa right now the last count has thrown 78 pitches as Danny Ozark you saw green light at Boone 3 and 0 and the Philly fans have come alive. Hit well that will be a base hit. Here comes Smith to score as the runners move up 90 feet and it's 4 to nothing Philadelphia. Bob Boone, his second RBI of the night, he's driven in two. Luzinski's driven in two. Luzinski's at third. At second base is Richie Hebner. At first base is Bob Boone. And talking with Joe Torrey as the pitching change will now be made. Joe making his way. He has not had good luck in that bullpen. Now we have a pitching change here in Philadelphia with Philadelphia leading the New York Mets four to nothing. Hey, Pete Rose, what's a man really want from his aftershave? No fancy perfumes or fancy bottles or fancy prices. Uh-uh. A man wants
wants to smell like a man. He sure does, and Aqua Velva congratulates Pete Rose on his record-breaking hitting streak. We're prouder than ever that Pete Rose is an Aqua Velva man. You know, Pete, there really is something about an Aqua Velva man. Daddy, Marvin has something to tell you. My new Chevy Monza wagon has more cargo room than any American sedan. Marvin? Even with the back seat up. And Monza is priced lower than any wagon sold in America. Marvin? Monza wagon has an impressive EPA mileage rating. 34 highway, 24 city. It has standard bucket seats. I want to marry your daughter in white striped tires. Uh, sir? Uh, oh, Marvin, he likes you. Because of a certain ability I possess, I've been asked to tell you all the useful shopping information you can find in the Bell System Yellow Pages. Names, addresses, phone numbers, maps, directions, credit cards, items for sale, charge accounts, deferred payment plans, brand names, regular valet parking, custom work, machine work, quantity discounts, colors, days and hours of business, insurance, bonding, deliveries, endorsements, cash and carry, 24-hour service, estimates, illustrations, years in business, same day. When service. you need to know who, what, where, when, and why, let your fingers do the walking through the Bell System Yellow Pages. Thank you. This is Atlanta Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, where just about 15 minutes ago, baseball history was made. Pete Rose going for a hit in his 44th consecutive game, the one that would tie him on the all-time consecutive game hitting streak list with Wee Willie Keeler in 1897. And there it was, leading off the sixth inning, Rose hit the 2-0 and pitch from Phil Necro, past second baseman Rod Gilbreth of the Braves, into right field for the single that brought him abreast of Will Willie Keeler in baseball history. Keeler, who compiled his 44-game hitting streak in the first 44 games, the 1897 season, has been matched by Rose, and now Rose has only Joe DiMaggio to try to catch. Now we take you back to the ball game in your area. Now there is the new pitcher for the New York Mets, right-hander Dale Murray, an overall record of five wins, four losses. With the New York Mets, he's four and three, coming from Cincinnati this year an ERA of 4.50 and that's kind of a little scary number right there to look at if you're a relief pitcher. Here's Jerry Martin and that'll be caught by Mazzilli. Fine play by the young center fielder. He went a long way for that ball that hung on him a little bit. Luzinski scores it is five to nothing Philadelphia. Now the ninth man to come to bat here in the Philadelphia sixth inning. That'll be Teddy Sizemore with two outs and runners remain at first and second base. At second base is Richie Hebner. At first base is Bob Boone. As Philadelphia has broken it open here in the sixth, scoring four times. Sizemore over two is fly to center and he's popped to first. Look out. Don, I'm looking at a scorebook that says Chicago nothing, Boston nothing in the fourth. I can't understand the sudden paucity of runs at Fenway Park. Well, it had to come sometime, Howard, you know. <laughs> Check swing, and this will end it for Philadelphia. As Sizemore's retired, the Phillies are gone, but they score four runs, and they now take a commanding lead by a score of five to nothing. A lot of motor oils offer you protection. Some offer you gasoline mileage, too. Avalon Super Premium has been tested for both. Tests in state trooper cars for over 4 million miles proved Havilland really protects. And in a test against the leading 10W40 oil advertising extra gasoline mileage, Havilland couldn't be beat. So get an oil that's been trooper tested and mileage tested. Get Havilland Super Premium from Texaco. From the top man right down to the bottom man. It just passes right down the line. Everybody pushes for quality. Willie Rawls, utility man. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. My job is to replace uh, any absentees. I'm here, there, all over the plant. Yeah, you know, you're not tied down to one job all the time. You're around different jobs. Metal finishing, welding, soldering. But soldering, I think I enjoy soldering more than any other job I've done because there's a lot of skill in that. Yeah, 
the fellas keep something going all the time. They, it's never dull around there. Yeah, well, they get along very good. Yeah, unions, unions good. Yeah, the people on the line, they have a lot of interest in the car. If I go out to buy a car, that's where I go, looking for a, a General Motors car. Because I'm right, at, right there in the plant, and I see how they're built, you know, see the quads that goes into them. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Uh, some of the crowd here of 21,133 at the vet tonight. And there's a story of Pete Rose. He was 0 for 1 his third time at bat. After walking and lining out to the shortstop, he had a base hit. His 44th straight game to time with Wee Willie Keeler. And as you see, just 12 short of the great streak of the Yankee Clipper Joe DiMaggio. Well, the more and more you think about that streak, Billy Martin, it is, it's amazing. It's just amazing. I tell you, when I play, it was just amazing playing that many ball games. <laughs> In a row? In a row. Don't be modest. Money Billy. without getting hurt or something like that. Now, right now, the New York Mets are at bat in the top half of the seventh inning. It'll be Willie Montanez and then John Stern and Lee Mazzilli. Let me tell you about number 44, Ruth Fan. He was helped a great deal by Andy Messersmith, now with the Yankees and currently disabled. Andy got him motivated, relaxed, organized, and Ruthven now says, as we look at a good call strike, pitching is an art, and Messersmith taught me. You know Messersmith. Could he, Billy Martin? Oh, very much so. Andy, when he's pitching, uh he is such a dedicated individual out there in the mound and on the bed. I mean, he just concentrates so much. He just doesn't want anybody to talk to him. And uh, you have to admire a man like that. Now, Montanez lining to the first baseman, and here's John Stern. Excuse me, Hart. I could have sworn that I saw Andy Messersmith running on a golf course at Princeville a couple of weeks ago. Well, knowing Andy, he hasn't given up. He'll come back. He's running just. A uh, golf court was going as fast as going, and he was right by me. So it must have been him. <laughs> Well, I hope he makes it because he's quite a competitor. The count 0 and 2 to Johnny Stearns, the Met catcher, bounced to second and bounced to third. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Well, the way Ruthven is throwing tonight, you've got to be impressed with this young man out of Fresno State College. Two balls and two strikes to count. That's Fresno State University. <laughs> Fresno State University. Yes, I mean, just because you went to Van Nuys High School. <laughs> <laughs> that line, and there is Maddox, and that is half number two. You know, just looking at a scouting report here that Jerry Klein's dug up for us on Dick Ruthven. When he was in college, and a man that you know, Billy Martin, Eddie Bachman was the scout at the time. And the remarks right here, it says, saw him in three innings last week, has a major league plus curveball, fastball above average, could pitch in the big leagues right now with improvement in control. One of the great, best breaking balls that we've seen on a right-handed pitcher. You know, Don, you hear a lot, of, a lot about baseball players, but the real unsung heroes in baseball are the scouts. They do a fantastic job. Well, that's true. It's kind of like the sergeants in the Army. They're, they're in the, they just kind of are the backbone. And you see the ball clubs that are pennant winners and contenders throughout the years, they're the ones that have the fine scouting staffs, the fine scouting departments. Well, Billy is on hiatus. Let's watch this pitch. This is Mazzilli. Billy's on hiatus from the Yankees until 1980 as the manager. Billy, as the manager until a few days ago, knows very well that it was Bertie Tibbetts, the super scout of the Yankees, the old manager who said about a kid named Mike Keith, who was a shortstop, if he's to make it in the big leagues, it'll be a catcher. And that's how he became a catcher. True? Very true. Of course, Bertie is one of the better scouts in baseball also. There's Hebner. 
And the New York Mets are retired. One, two, three in the seventh inning. And after six and a half, it remains Philadelphia five and the New York Mets nothing. There are lots of things to munch on to feed your hungry crew. Burgers, tacos, pizza pie, just to name a few. But I come for good fresh chicken, like I know I should. Eleven herbs and spices make it finger licking good. It's so nice, nice to feel, so good about a meal, so good about Kentucky Fried Chicken. Possible. America's waking up to the impossible shave. Gillette Atra, the first razor with a head that pivots to follow every contour of your face. For closeness with comfort you never thought possible. Impossible. This Atra face-hugging action keeps twin blades at the perfect angle. I've never shaved this close with this much comfort. It's, it's impossible. impossible. Gillette Atra. Yes, the impossible shave is here. Listen up, team. It's a long ride to Hog Flats. Yeah, all day long. So Starch is going to pass out the right guard yeah. deodorant. We got stick or spray. With right guard deodorant, stick or spray protects all day. They don't just cover up odor. They help stop odor before it starts. All day long. And it's going to be a long day. Yeah. Right guard deodorant. Don't get dressed without it. There's a story. It is five to nothing, Philadelphia. And right now, let's go to Fenway Park in Boston and Al Michaels to update the Boston Red Sox and the Chicago White Sox game. For those of you watching the Philadelphia New York game, welcome to Fenway Park in Boston. The game is tied one apiece. Breaking ball is low and inside, and Sider home is on. Two and on for the White Sox here in the sixth inning with a run in. To update you on the scoring tonight, the Boston Red Sox scored a run in the fourth inning, getting a run scoring single from Fred Lynn to take a 1 0 lead. But the White Sox have tied the game here in the sixth inning. A leadoff single by Bosley, a sacrifice by Kessinger, and then a run scoring single by George Orta. Dwight Evans made a perfect throw to the plate on Bosley trying to score, but Carlton Fisk couldn't hang on. Bosley scored to tie the game. And here is Ralph Gar now with runners at first and second and only one man out. And also for our Phillies Mets viewers of course as far as this one is concerned the Red Sox have been slumping they've lost 10 of their last 12 their lead has been shaved to four and a half games in the American League East. The White Sox meanwhile 14 and a half games back coming in they've won three in a row. Gar has a single in two trips tonight. He singled his first time up to center in the fourth inning he flied to center. One ball and no strikes to Ralph Gar. Lifetime 313. Change up and a beauty. Count is even to Gar. Ball one, strike one. The runner at second base is George Orta. And at first base, Eric Soderholm. Game tied, one apiece. Dennis Eckersley, after his 12th win of the year, he has lost four times. by Gar on a check swing. It's a ball and two strikes. Dal told you the Red Sox have had problems scoring runs. That is Ralph Gar over the last four seasons. 353 in 1974. He tailed off in 75 back to 376 and 77. 1974 he won the batting championship. A ball and two strikes from Eckersley. Tapped on the first base side, and it's a foul ball. So it's still one and two on Ralph Gar. The Red Sox problems coming in tonight, as we've documented during the course of our telecast. Offense, the pitching's been good. And again, Eckersley turning in a good performance tonight. They've got no gripes as far as their rotation is concerned and the bullpen has done an adequate job of late. It's simply been the hitting. 
and it's punctuated by the fact that George Scott is now 0 for his last 25, and Jim Rice, who is 0 for 2 tonight, is 1 for his last 23, and Carl Yastrzemski is injured. A ball and two strikes to Gar. Eckersley again. Inside, ball two, strike two. But there's no panic in Boston. No, I think more of the panic here, Al, comes from the fans, mm -hmm. not from the players. That's not to say they don't think about the other ball clubs behind him. Milwaukee, Baltimore, New York. Got him. Good fastball, strikes out Gar. That is a six strikeout for Dennis Eckersley. Two men out, 1-1 one, one ball game. Number so five. that's the story from Fenway Park in Boston. Oh, now no. back to Don Drysdale in Philadelphia. Joel Youngblood deleted off for the Mets in the top half of the eighth inning. Philadelphia went one, two, three in their last half of the seventh. It is five to nothing. Philadelphia, five runs, seven hits, no errors. Youngblood tonight has been caught looking and he popped to first. And the count of ball and two strikes. Ruthven in a very strong performance tonight. Going back a little more to that scouting report that Eddie Bachman had on Ruthven. He had his fastball gauged it good. Curveball good. And control at an A, meaning average. Well, we'll have to take a new look at the scout. Well, this is quite a while ago. Has to be. It was fastball looks better than good. At that time, a 6'3", 195-pounder. As a matter of fact, this was on November 9th of 1972 that this report was dated. Outdated. <laughs> That'll be a base hit left field by Youngblood. Now that's a, that's an artificial turf hit. Right, Billy? He did get through there quick. You can see the infielders, they're playing back. And they'll play back a little deeper than usual, as Billy Martin has noted at the offset of the ball game comes on. As you know, Don, some pitchers, when they first start out, they will get a little faster later in life. And I think this is true right here. There's some of the scores for you. Pittsburgh 2 to 1 over Montreal tonight. Cincinnati Atlanta 1 1 in the seventh and 3 to nothing now Houston over San Francisco in the seventh. Some American League scores Toronto 6 to 5 over the Tigers in the ninth and Kansas City's come back to take the lead over Cleveland 3 to 2. There's another base hit. And Luzinski will chase this one down and play it off the wall. And Youngblood appears he can motor. He goes to third. And Dal Maxwell holds him up right there. And we're going to have a pinch hitter for the pitcher. Eddie Kinpool as this pitch now is up. And Billy Martin is a manager. That's the first thing that you look for, isn't it, on a sinker ball pitcher? That's correct, Don. He was starting to get up last inning. Once a pitcher starts getting the ball up, he's losing the velocity. He's reaching back for a little bit extra, which he has lost, and that's understandable. He hasn't pitched in nine days. Now here's the veteran Eddie Crane pool. And they start to stir around out of the Philadelphia bullpen with Philadelphia leading by a score of five to nothing. That is hit number five for the Mets tonight. Left-hander Tug McGraw gets up and starts to throw. And Joe Torrey talks about the development of his team in spite of the team's standings. He's talking about what you're seeing now. The not give it up attitude of this team and the ability to make a close game of it at the very least. And they've won some very important games. Boston got out of that half inning we were looking at without any run scored. It's 1-1. Bottom of the sixth. Cranpool hits it to the alley, but Luzinski's there. The runner's tag. Here comes Youngblood to score. It is five to one. Philadelphia holding at second base is Flynn. Yeah. 
So the sacrifice fly RBI by Eddie Cranepool will go to the top of the order. Here's Elliot Maddox. For Cranepool, that's his 14th RBI of the year. Maddox tonight has walked twice and he's bounced to the first baseman. As a matter of fact, the only two walks that Ruthven has issued tonight have been to Elliot Maddox. At second base, that is Doug Flynn. That could drop. Here comes the other Maddox, and he plays it on a hop. And nobody can go anywhere. Now Flynn has to hold at second base. Maddox on a good play. Billy, I thought that was extraordinary by Maddox. It was a great play. He charged the ball. You know, uh, he thought he was going to catch the ball. He had enough runs uh, in the lead, so he didn't worry about the ball getting by him. Wouldn't hurt nothing. So he played the ball well, I thought. And the true hop on the artificial turf as you look at it one more time. That ball sinking and dying in a hurry. Plus the fact that uh, Maddox plays the shallowest center field I guess in the National League. I think it was a close ball game. He might have laid back and played a little bit yeah. differently. Now right now Tim Foley is a scheduled hitter but we will have a pinch hitter. Don't, Don't forget, forget folks. You play golf course, Howard? If I did, you've got a scoop, <laughs> but I know you did. <laughs> National Golf Championship. Friday night, the highlights, as you see it there. Saturday, third round coverage. Sunday, final round coverage. And, of course, Keith is talking about Oakmont, where almost incredibly, in the 30s, an unknown named Sam Box suddenly captured the Open Championship. Yeah, but I was there the day that Johnny Miller shot that 63. <laughs> Goss with longing in your arms and in your <laughs> eyes and in your heart. <laughs> Here's Bruce Beauclair and he's going to hit for Tim Foley. That was the year I predicted Goldall would win it when Fox won it. Now Joe Torrey one big swing away from getting right back in it. Beauclair hitting 244, three home runs, 14 RBIs. On deck, the left fielder Steve Henderson. Runners at first and second, Flynn at second, and Maddox at first. Oh, and two. That last pitch clocked at 88 miles an hour, so he's just about on par. Hasn't slowed up much, if any, Billy Morton. Well, sometimes when the ball's up high, the speed can be deceiving. That's an interesting comment. Wasn't deceiving. He turned it loose. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Henderson, he's one for three tonight. Henderson has bounced to second. He's single and he's bounced to short. Henderson starting at 273. Nine home runs and 51 RBIs. Whoopity dropped a little bit from the side. And for those of you who might be joining us late, Pete Rose has hit in his 44th consecutive game. That was in his third time at bat. He walked his first time at bat. He lined a short his second time at bat. So at 0 for 1, he had a base hit. Right. And now just 12 behind the Yankee Clipper. Yeah. Anderson caught looking, and the Mets are retired in the eighth inning. A run on two hits. After seven and one half, it remains. Now five to one, Philadelphia. You look as though you could use some excitement, America. Something new, something fresh, something as fresh, as new, as exciting as the new Chevrolet Monte Carlo. 
The new Monte Carlo surrounds you with personal luxury, with quiet comfort, with a surprising amount of room. But most of all, it surrounds you with genuine driving pleasure. So come drive one and put a little distance between yourself and the crowd. At one time, imported oil was no problem to America. Today, we import over 45% of our oil. If our supplies are ever cut off again, it could affect your driving, your heating, your job. Texaco believes conservation must be increased, alternate energy sources developed, exploration and production stepped up. Because none of us want to be caught over a barrel. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. It's bad enough I got a dent in my uh, kitchen. <laughs> now I got to face the insurance hassle. You don't with the good hands, people. We take the hassle out of claims. Sure you do. All state ah, people treat you right. I hear you had a little problem with your camp. It was a tree. And we settle most damage claims on the spot. This will fix it. Do we take the hassle out of claims? You bet we do. It's my kind of people. <laughs> when there's a way to take the hassle out of claims, all state will do it. And that's a promise from us. The good hands people. And there's a new pitcher for the New York Mets, Howard. Right. We'll get to that in a moment tomorrow night because every fan in America should know this. At 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 2020, with highlights of Pete Rose in action, who tonight tied Wee Willie Kill with his hit in the 44th consecutive game. Billy Martin's with us in the booth tonight. Billy, tell the Johnny Babbitt story on Joe DiMaggio has the record at 56. Well, I believe at one time when uh, Joe D was going for a streak, uh, Johnny Babbitt tried to actually pitch around Joe, and the ball was about a foot outside, and Joe D was, got a little mad, and he hit a line drive right through the box and got a base hit. Pete Rose may yet have to do that. Don? Okay, Howard. And that's very true. That's not a possible, without reason, really. Somebody might say, well, I'm a DiMaggio fan, not a Rose fan, and turn around and do it the other way. You never know. Or would you go around saying, I'm the guy that gave him the hit to beat Joe D? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's going to be a lot of talking about it. Think about Roger Maris and Tracy Stallard. You think about Kenny Keltner and Joe DiMaggio, who made the two great plays on DiMaggio right on the line. This is Mike Schmidt. You're older than I thought. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes to Schmidt. He's 0 for 2 tonight. There's a shortstop now. Flynn Hall. Oh, don't get it. Antonis thought he got it. That'll be the third air on the Mets, Billy. I believe he tagged him on top of the head, but I think his foot was already on the base. That's a tough play for the shortstop right there. There's that in between hop and then the high. Have to lay back and play it on the high hop. Now watch you see Montanez come down, but he's on the bag. That's the kind of Rizzuto and Reese always made. They were both amazing, Howard. Both of them. I think both of them should be in the Hall of Fame very shortly. I agree with you. Glad you brought it up. Here's Lazinski to the second baseman. Young Glad to Flynn, and that's all. Now they get the lead man at second base, the bull, Greg Luzinski, on at first with the fielder's choice, and here's Richie Hebner. Youngblood looked pretty smooth making that play, didn't he, for an outfielder? He's at second with Flynn at short, Cranville stayed in the game, and he's in right field. Keith, I put Paul Blair in the infield this year also, and he did a super job for me. He was. He was over there at second base where you had him at third. You had him all over. He can do it all. And there's Danny Ozark, club professional, great pickup last year. Yes, he was. And I'll tell you, his mother kept calling me all during the year, wanting to know when his boy's going to play. And Paul kept telling me, I'm ready, Skip. Put me in there anytime you want. <laughs> you put him in there on that final game of the playoffs against Kansas City when he got the hit that kept you alive. He's a clutch player. That's going to be trouble, and will drop. Luzinski hesitated at second. He'll go to third. It goes by 
backed up by Henderson. It'll be a double by Hedner. Now there's a tough play for the center fielder, Mazzilli. He was over in right center field. We've talked all night long about how they played Hebner to pull as you look at it again. Now this ball is going to slice. Just see the way that ball came off his bat. And it's always going away from Mazzilli. And then he can't reach it. There's that high hop, Billy, you're talking about. Great job by the left fielder and also a great job by the shortstop and second baseman lining up for the throw in. And they're going to walk now Bob Boone. And as again we pointed out, it's the little thing that can make you or break you. Brewer had something on that pitch for the pitch out. You know, Don, that's one thing uh, we worked on a lot in spring training. Pitch outs, uh, where the pitcher, uh, like you have a pitch out, or a fellow's going to be running, the catcher jumps out, and not this type of pitch out, but a regular pitch out, and uh, you'd be surprised how many pitchers and catchers can't do it. It's amazing to see the number of pitchers that can't throw easy. They can only throw one way. They either have to throw from a windup, and it's noticeable in a position just like this, either walking a man intentionally or a little top ball that they come in and get and then just go to make an easy play at first base. Not basis. amazing to me or to Billy. We watched you a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> but we've always talked about that pitcher. Once you turn that ball loose, you're not just a pitcher. You get your toe plate. You're now the fifth infielder. And you better be a good one because you're the closest man to the plate. That's right. <laughs> Here's Jerry Martin. Brewer spending part of the year at Tidewater where he was three and one. Born and still makes his home in Jamaica, New York. A 6'6", 220 pounder. Two and all. More action in the med bullpen. The white Bernard. Right back and up the middle base hit. That'll score Luzinski. Here comes Hedner. The throw by Mazzilli. And they get it. Stern shaking up a little bit, but there was a play by the young center fielder, Lee Mazzilli, and a good play, Billy Martin. That ball up the middle, and he's charging towards home plate all the way. Great play and a super play by the catcher. He stayed right in there. Looks like he got spiked. He might have got spiked. Here comes Luzinski to score, but look where Mazzilli is in regards to second base. One hop off of the carpet. There's Hebner. And Stern's in front of the home plate. A beautiful job of blocking it. As we look at it again, Billy Martin just had a beautiful job at home plate. One of the points of difference between Joe Tari, about which he's Frank, the Mets manager, and Stern's has been Stern's failure to cover that plate, to block it, and make the tag. So, Tari's lessons are taking hold. Stearns on that play, leaving no room for the runner, Luzinski, to get in there. Great job. Now, runners at first and second. And here's Teddy Sizemore one more time as Stern going back over, and he's got the shin guards off. Whether he's going to come back out, it looks like it just tore the straps off Bill or maybe cut part of the shin guard. Probably did. I wish I had them at second base. My knees wouldn't look like a road <laughs> <by now. laughs> 